wedding season. Dun, 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 dun. But other than that, I decided to do this video about a theme, about if you're doing a party for a bridal shower, or it could be an engagement party, or even just a baby shower, or if you just feel like whooping something in the kitchen, then stay tuned. I'm going to show you a couple of recipes, a couple of ideas that you can do. They're quick, they're easy to do. I got them from Pinterest. And uh, if you want to check out the recipes, I'm going to have the link below. So feel free to give this a video a thumbs up if you, if you like these types of videos. And feel free to comment below. Let me know what other types of videos that you'd like to see. Or if you want to try out, if you want me to try out other recipes for you. So stay tuned and we'll see how it turns out. And I hope you like it. Now this is a type of recipe idea that looks like you put a lot of thought and effort into it, but actually it's pretty easy and quick to do. Now that's what I'm talking about. Alright, so what you're going to need is a can of 7-Up, some lime juice, powdered sugar flavored, and buttons or flowers, things to decorate with. You're going to need a martini cup and you're going to just take the rim and stir it into the lime juice all around the rim of the cup. Next up, you're going to dab the rim of the martini cup into the flavored powder sugar all around the rim. You want to get that right in there. And it's just a nice little idea or uh, when your guests take a sip of the, their drink, it just tastes really good with the, with the drink itself. Next up, you're going to need a teaspoon of flavored sugar. Put that into the cup and add some regular room temperature water, just maybe about a teaspoon of uh, water. And stir that a little bit just to give us some color into the drink. Add some 7-Up and that's it, you're done. Now if you want to go above and beyond, you can add some decorations at the bottom of the cup. I got some flowers and a ribbon. And then I just tie them together with some glue and that's it. Enjoy your drink. I've always seen these pom-poms at parties. You can put them on a present or you can decorate them on the wall as you like. So let's check it out. What you're going to need is some tissue paper, any color depending on your theme, scissors, a hole puncher, and a thread. doesn't matter the color. And I added in some decorations that you can put on the pom-poms, but that's optional, of course. So let's begin. You're going to need three papers of long tissue paper and make sure when you're going to fold it in half. Now make sure every time you fold uh, the tissue paper in half, you want to make sure that it blends very perfectly and uh, that it's not a little bit over the edge. Next, you're going to fold it again in half, same thing. And then you're going to fold it once more across to form a triangle. Flip it over one more time for another triangle. And again. And now you're going to just take half of it and flip it into kind of like half a triangle and then flip it around and form another triangle. Now this is going to make a smaller triangle and it kind of doubles the layers that way. It thickens up the, the pom-pom itself. Grab a pen or a marker, whatever you want, and then draw a half oval. And you'll see why exactly that shape you want to choose. So just make sure you line it up really nicely. This is where you're going to need your scissors. Cut all around all that oval, half that oval. Chop, 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 chop. And then when you open it up, you can start to see that the pom-pom is taking its shape. So count the, pa the tissue papers in half and take out one half outside. And then what you want to do is take that half and you're going to place it over it, but you're going to kind of twist it a bit so that way it's not exactly over the, the first half of paper. So that way it, it forms like a star, kind of. And then you're going to just flip it over nice and softly. And there you go, flip it in half. Then you're going to grab your hole puncher and you want to just hole punch it, but make sure not to punch it uh, right at the line, just a little bit above it, so that way it gives you some space. So that way when you open it up, you want to make sure that there are two holes. 
and that's where you're gonna need the thread for it, or the string, or whatever that whatever you have. Cut up the string, the the size that you want. If you want to hang it pretty high, then you want the string to be higher, or if you just want to display it on a table or something, then you can cut the string as short as you want. So make sure to get the string in between both of the holes, that way it's hanging, and you're gonna need to tie it twice. Don't tie it right into the circle, tie it across that line where the half shape is. One, and there is another. So now we can start seeing the shape. Okay, now this is the part where you're gonna need some patience. So you're gonna grab the first layer and crunch it up. Same thing with the next layer, crunch that up. And you're gonna keep doing that until re you reach halfway through. If you wanna do just a flower, then you can continue uh, crunching it up. Otherwise, you're gonna have to flip it over just like that and then start crunching up the papers one by one. Now with the magic of fast forwarding, there it is. You can see the final shape of the pom-pom. I found a different way to do pom-pom. Now if you want to check it out, then uh, click below. I also have the link. And I found it much easier to do it that way. This recipe takes a little bit more prep time. I baked the cake the day before and I cut it up into tiny little pieces. That way it's much easier to crumble. Uh, using my hands, as you can see, that's the best way I find. So you want to crumble it up into tiny little pieces. And just to make sure, you just get a fork and crumble it up a little bit more. Make it smooth. I got some frosting. And I, am, I started off with two tablespoons of icing, just so I can see how the texture is overall. And then if I needed more, I'll add later. There is one, and there is the second. Now the idea of frosting, obviously, is to be able to group together, and then you get to dig in and use your hands, and you want to make sure the frosting is evenly got it, it evenly put throughout your cake, and just keep stirring it, and you can start to feel the texture of the dough. Now if you notice that um, it cracks a little bit, then, then that way you know you need to add a little bit more frosting. And that's exactly what I did. I added about maybe a teaspoon of frosting. And then again, I mixed it all together. And I started trying to uh, make like a little golf ball size with it. And I noticed it didn't crumble, so it was good to go. So what you want to do is you want to make exactly the size of a ping pong, nothing bigger because that way the, the stick won't be able to handle it and then that way it'll break. So just as small as a ping pong ball and, and you're good to go. So place that on a baking sheet and continue to do the rest of your bowl. Next off, you're going to grab the cake pop stick and dip that into the melted chocolate that you would have melted prior to that, just at the tip of the stick. You don't want to get too much on it. And that's going to act like a glue, pretty much, for the cake pop. You're going to insert it into the ball. And don't put it uh, more than halfway, just a little bit actually less than halfway. You don't want to break it too much. And then the excess chocolate, you're just going to turn it around the stick, just like kind of like glue. Once you're done with that, then you're going to dip in the cake pop into the melted chocolate that, that you have. Now you want to make sure to just dip it in. Don't twist it or turn it around. Just dip it in and dip it out. Because if you stir it around, then it's going to break off. And that's the trick to it. Now you want to just to tap away the excess chocolate so that way it doesn't drip as it's drying out. So now you can slowly twist it around, and then we're going to put the cake pop onto the foam. So you can still see that the melted chocolate is dripping off, but that's okay. 
it'll it'll dry out. At least we took out most of it. And that's it. So if you want to decorate it from then on, I brought some glitter. Obviously it's edible. Sprinkle it on to the cake pop. And I also have some edible pearls that I'm going to be dabbing it on to the cake pop. Just for some decoration. But you can do whatever design you want based on the theme that you have. And just the sky's the limit pretty much with creativity. Once you've decorated it, then just leave it on to the foam and let it dry for, it takes about less than five minutes really to, to let it dry. And that's it. Yum yum. Hmm, let's see what my magic wand can do. Ta-da! And there you have it. It's all done. Uh, it made about 26 cake pops. So I pretty much just decorated the foam that I had with wrapping paper poked some holes using the scissors and just added in the cake pops one by one. With the pearls I ended up making a little heart and the initials of the bride and groom that will be attending. Ta-da! That's it! So enjoy!